So I just wanted to do a quick video on uh, the progress we're making on connecting all four of these EG4 3000 watt inverters to that 25.5 kilowatt EG4 uh, version 2 5120 volt battery bank. Uh, we're running that overnight with our upstairs air conditioner 24 hours a day. We run that air conditioner at three and a half ton. And overnight that runs that plus these um, there's four chest freezers and that refrigerator over there uh, and we run our pool pump overnight we run our pool pump 24 hours a day on the solar but the way I have this set up right now and I tried to lay out the wiring so you could um, see where it's going is this is P1 and this is P2 so we got P1 and P2, P1 and P2. So right now I have these connected. That one is in parallel with that one and that one's on and those are actually running loads. But then this P1 and this P2 is on, but it's not running a load. There's no, I haven't flipped the switch down here to turn on. You can see there's nothing over here where it's not connected as where on this one, we have our power connected so we can run loads. So we're basically using this one and this one as chargers to charge our load up because we ran our batteries down to, um, it was like 60%. So all five of those batteries, 25.5 kilowatt was run down to 60%. So we used 40%. So right now it's charging back up again and we are at uh, 71%. So, and it is 8, 10 in the morning. So we have, now we have those 4,000 watt uh, mono bifacial panels connected to this, 10 of those. So it's 4,000 watt. Uh, solar with up to a thousand watt gain with 10 100 watts on each panel on this one over here we have uh, just eight solar panels but those won't come into the sun until probably around 9 30 and then they'll be in full sun this one is in the sun right now and that's actually 12 330 watt panels so we got six of them six 330 watt mono panels in series the other six in series and we parallel those together so right now we are running um a low we're running that upstairs air conditioner 1.36 so it's actually about 2700 watts that we're using between the two inverters and running the air conditioner along with all of these um, refrigerators and freezers and also the pool pump right now. So then this last one down here, we have this connected to 16 solar panels, poly solar panels. There's eight in series and eight in series. So eight of those are in sunlight and the other eight I got another week and a half, two weeks before I'll get full sunshine on those for about two and a half months. Then I can use it when I really need it for the summertime. So, but right now with just eight of those in series, 250 watt polys, we're getting 12 amps here. So, and this is with running a load where um, running that air conditioner and on top of that, we're charging our batteries so let's see if um there we go so we're getting we're charging our battery and running the load adding four amps here and 12 amps down here so we're adding 16 amps right now we're not getting anything off of that one or that one yet and like I said, it's uh, 8 15 in the morning, so we're running our three and a half ton upstairs air conditioner, all these freezers and fridge, the pool pump, and we're still putting in 
16 amps into our battery bank. So on five of those batteries, we're about three amps into each one of those. So this one and this one should start giving me some more um, in just about a half hour or so, I should really start being able to bring in a lot. So, but like I said, we have these connected where that one's P1, P2, P1, P2. Now I can't, I cannot fire these two up. It'll give me an error code. So right now I'm just running these. It's just charging right now. Because what I really want to do is I have this going into this breaker panel right here, which is going to be too small. So we're going to move over and we're going to use this breaker panel, which pretty much has almost everything in it that we'll be able to use. And instead of running our output from this one, this one, this one, and this one down here, instead of running in that box, we're going to run in the side here and run into the top there. So we'll be able to do 12,000 watts out of this one solar panel, or this um, one electrical panel. And I mean, we got almost everything on there. This one, we just started kind of putting some stuff. We have the um, mini split in the garage and then the outlets over here. And really that's all we were using for this one. So this was, we just got this one not long ago, and we're using this one, um, we were, to run our upstairs air conditioner during the day, but then we were going to grid at night. Until we got a hold of these babies, with only 50 watt idle consumption, and now see at nighttime, with these all on right now, with the solar on, and the batteries all left on, this one and this one will shut down at night when the solar is no longer uh, running it. And they'll just turn off as where those, this one and this one's carrying the load. Now, when I actually go to wire this up, I'm going to have to wire up where I'm connecting to all four, where they're all four connected. It's a different way of connecting using these communication cables. So you can see right here, I've got the white one on the top yellow one on the bottom and then over to this one you can see that the yellow is on top and the white is on bottom once again it's the opposite of what it is on this one same thing here we got the yellow on the top black on the bottom and we come down here and we got these this black wire on the top and the yellow one on the bottom now when we go to wire that where we're using those We'll end up where it'll be this P1 and P1 will be connected differently and this P2 and P2 will be connected differently. So right now we can only get 3000 watt output from this and this, a total of 6000 watts of output. Three on this, three on that. But when we have these all connected with four of them in parallel, we will have, where we'll be able to get 6000 out of this pair and 6,000 out of this pair for a total of 12,000 watts. Now, this is a 12,000 watt inverter and it's a beast and it'll take a lot, but you don't want to get close to that 12,000 watts. They say it'll greatly reduce the life of this inverter. Now, you can buy spare boards on uh, line though. You can find those easily online for those to replace them if something, one of the boards were to wear out. But, 186 pounds, 18 pounds. Big difference. <laughs> These are a lot easier to handle. Now, I wanted to show you how easy this is to wire up. So we have the solar coming in here, the negative on the black and the positive on the red. And we bring that over here and follow the trail and it just goes right down and it lands in this breaker. Now, the next breaker we have is this one right here. It goes up here. And we go into this one. You can see it right here. So we got the negative and the positive. And then the next one is this breaker. We follow this 
and it actually will go up to this one right here, right there. And this last one, the breaker for the solar goes right here, curls down, comes uh, under here and comes into your negative and your positive. So we have our four breakers all in one breaker panel right over here. And I left this off so you can see how easy it is to wire this. Now for our battery, connection to our battery, we have the plus on the left and the negative on the right. And you can see that the black is the negative coming out on the right, the positive is coming out on the left side. So we run every one of our positives into a breaker. So this is for, I'm sorry, this one is for this breaker right here, the first one. The second one, if we follow that along, that goes to this panel or this inverter right here. The third one, if we follow this, that runs all the way over right here up to here. So we're into this third one here. So the first breaker is that one, second breaker, third breaker, and this fourth breaker right here comes out, comes down here, runs over here, and comes in right here on this bottom one here. So, and once again, we did the same thing, um, but on our negative, we didn't use a breaker. We only used a breaker for the battery to shut off the battery. We only need one side, so we do the positive side. So the negative out of this first one comes right out of here, goes into our bus bar, and the bus bar is used to connect to our batteries. So we've got this first one here, the second one, the wire goes right here, goes up into this one, right here, and then the third one is right here, runs along right here, runs over here, and goes up right into here, into this third one. The last one is down here, runs underneath here, and it connects right here. So this wire, black wire, and this black wire are going to the batteries. Right now, I have this set up temporarily where I have those three batteries are connected and these two batteries are connected. I'm running them, the communication in parallel, but I need to, I don't have a, I just have this three slot uh, EG4 server rack battery case. I need to get a six slot so I can put them all in there. And then I'm going to have to um, take and um, rewire this a little bit. But right now, if you go up here, and you look on our amp hours, it says 145 amp hours, and it switches to uh, 71 amp hours. So I have these two, the, the uh, communication on this comes into this battery. This is the master battery of all five. And so I use that to run this, and it goes right up into here. And if I were to unplug this, you would see an error code pop up on here in a second, there we go, 19. So that air code pops up saying there's no communication. As soon as I plug it back in, it goes away. So the, um, the system is really nice and it's really easy to set up. And I'll show you on the, uh, once again, it was really easy. You got your positive and your negatives coming out of, for your battery for everything. So now if we look at our output, we've got our neutral is our white and our line is our black. And then we have a ground wire. So it's a um, two wire with ground and it's 10 gauge on this we're using, 10 AWG. So every one of these we have the, the, neg or the ground um, grounded to the case right here on this uh, grounding screw right there. You can see the ground symbol right here. So we've got that grounded on every one of these. And see down there. Okay, so those are all grounded to the cases of the inverter. So on this P1, we have the black wire goes through here, comes out, and it goes on 
this leg over here on this side. There's two legs. There's a leg here and a leg here. So the black wire from that one lands on this one. And also the black wire from this one, when we go to rewire these, I've already had this wired up. The black wire from this one, which is the line, will come here and go down here and land on this leg as well. Now, the white wire, which is the neutral, that goes through here, comes out here, and all the white wires, regardless, land on this strip right here and are tightened down. So we've got the white wire from this one going right through here. Then we have the white wire right here going right down here, and it lands, um, lands right in here, the second one right here. So there's the first inverter, second inverter, okay? So then if we go over here, we have our line, which is black, and our neutral. So the black wire goes through here, comes in here, and lands, uh, the wires are in front of it, but there's a um, bar back there that we connect to that. So it's um, actually this leg right here. And the same thing over here. We have the black one coming out of, coming out of this bottom inverter, because this is P2 and that's P2. So this one is gonna go out and it's gonna go on this leg on this side as well. But both the white wire, the white neutral line right here is gonna go here and it's gonna land right up here. The neutral up on the top one here is going to go through here and it's going to land right over here so we have all those landing right there so you have this inverter is p2 and p2 those two are this leg on this side the right side this inverter and this inverter are p1 and p1 and they'll land on this leg over on the left side so your black wires, which are your line, are gonna go on the left side for the P1s. P2s, they're gonna go on the right side. And then all of your white wires are gonna go up there on the top here. Now you have your ground wire that was grounded on every one of these, on these cases of the inverters. Those go down here and those land in there on the grounding bar. Now. I haven't done it yet, but right here is a um, bonding screw, which will bond basically right there in this hole right here. If I put that screw in there, that will screw into this metal case and that'll bond the neutral to this box right here. Right now I kind of have it free floating. So I haven't finished my wiring so much yet, but that would be bonding otherwise I would run a neutral, ground earth neutral, out of here, out there, out of the house, and into the ground. But I can't do that at my house. I have to do bonding. So bonding in all these panels. So um, you got to figure out what is the right thing for you to do. And it's up to you which way you're going to do it. I have to do it that way because I'm actually picking up quite a bit of voltage in my earth outside when I try to put a ground, a 10 foot grounding rod in the um, soil, um, I end up picking up too much voltage and I'm getting ears and it won't run the inverters. So I have to do bonding on mine. So you can talk to them at Signature Solar, ask them and they'll be a great help to you. Uh, if you still don't know what to do, get a certified electrician. I'm not a certified electrician. I'm just a DIY guy that has figured it out <laughs> watching other people on videos sometimes as well so but i just wanted to show you how easy this is to wire this up now on this down here we have the breakers this double pole 30 amp breaker i have one side of it if you look in here um i have the black wire right here and then the white wire the white wire goes to this breaker right here. Oops. White wire goes to this breaker and the black wire right here goes to this breaker. They use this right here. 
um, so you can switch it on off at the same time. Now that one is actually going down and, um, oh, it's actually in this one. It's actually going down to my air conditioner for my three and a half ton upstairs. So in this breaker right here is a 15 amp breaker. And this one is actually just on here. It is the black wire goes in here and the white wire is connected up there. As where on my 230 volt, the white wire and black wire are connected on each one of these. So um, for the 230, I have to use the black and the white wire that goes um, to the air conditioner and I ground it in here. And then on the 15 amps, I'm only using the black wire. I'm only using the line to go into the breaker here because the neutral is all up here. All my white wires are connected up on this bar right here. So this breaker right here is a 15 amp breaker and that actually runs over here for my outlet. And that outlet I use uh, for this freezer over here and this refrigerator. So I wanted to put one close enough over there. So I usually have them both plugged in there, but I'm running an extension cord because I wanted to do some things. Um, so, and then this 15 amp breaker, once again, is just the black wire going in the bottom of the breaker and the white wire is up on top here. That one's going down to this outlet right here. So, and once again, we have the grounding wire going in to that grounding bar back there. You can see all those copper wires going in there. Now, this one is the breaker. It's another 30 amp breaker. And this breaker, we have the same thing. We have the white wire on the left side, the black wire on the right side, and then the ground wire is going over to our grounding bar back in there. And that runs to the, actually runs out the wall here, to the mini split, but it controls this 18,000 BTU mini split. So we have that wired up, but that's all I can put in here is those two outlets, the three and a half ton air conditioner and this mini split. And I, I'm gonna have 12,000 watts. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to change over to a bigger panel right here. So, and we already have a slot in here for our three and a half ton. Our downstairs four tons already in here. We have our pool heater, which is a 12.7 ton. That's the main reason why we're kind of doing this is because that thing takes 7,500 watts to run. And the most I could get out of this was 6,500. So I was using a EG4 charge controller to supplement the charge to my battery bank that I was connecting on my bus bars down there. I was able to run it, but those used solar panels I have, I, I could only get 6,500 watts out of 12,000 to 14,000 in panels, watts and panels. And it was insane, I couldn't do it. So, but with this, I have those 10 uh, 400 watt by facials that can get up to another 100 watt gain so they can go up to 500 watt, theoretically. I have these on this and I can go actually, this will actually go, I've had as high as 3,035 3, watts. 3,335 watts coming out of this one inverter. And then I had 2,500 out of this one and I have not connected all four. So once I get all four together, it'll split the loads between all four. So if I'm running 8,000 watts, it's gonna split the load and put 2,000 here, 2,000 there, 2,000 there, 2,000 there. So it's gonna split the loads evenly. But right now it's splitting the load between this one and this one. Cause those are the only ones turned on running a load. These are just you being used as a charge controller at the moment. So the uh, last thing I have here is on here, we have the, the negative right here goes down to this Anderson 175 amp cable and that connects to the bottom set of batteries. The red side runs up here to this side right here. 
This red runs down to an Anderson 175 amp right there. And then the black one right here runs to this. So this black one and this red one is one cable, this red one and this black one is the other cable. Eventually when I wire it correctly, I'm just gonna have one set on here and the positive will end up being up on this side and the negative side of the cable will actually go all the way down and connect down here on this one. So we'll have the negative for the five batteries and then the positive for the five batteries. So it'll travel through the bus bar and it will charge these batteries really, really close. The other thing I wanted to show you on here was these are actually, I just got these a couple weeks ago. These are actually UL listed um, as were these down here were not UL listed. So big deal on the UL listing on these. Um, in case you've been looking for a UL listed battery to use in your solar system um, for, I don't know whether off grid or they might be used, you might be able to use these for on grid. Check with the um, people at Signature Solar and make sure that these are UL listed to be able to use on grid. Um, but these are all the four, all five batteries are the same. These are just an older model before they went UL listed, but they're all the same battery. Um, they changed the changed it around a little bit the way you connect your stuff but it's still the same battery uh, anyways really like the way these systems work really like the fact they're only 18 pounds now when when we go to start something up with this one and this one being in parallel right now running our loads you can get 50 amp in rush off of this one and 50 amp separate in rush off of this one to start up your loads so these will start my three and a half ton i have not tried my four ton yet because i'm waiting until i actually take and run i'll have to disconnect all all of this output wire and those will actually go running over here and up and we'll go running here over up and into this panel right here um to where I'll be able to run the 12,000 watts in there. So all these, all these things right here, I'll have to di disconnect and rewire it so they all run over into that panel. But, and that'll be nice. I'll be able to pretty much run everything I have. Um, I can run my three and a half ton, my four ton, my pool pump. Um, I could run my small pool heater. I could run, so I'd have my three and a half ton upstairs and my four ton downstairs, run my small 18,000 BTU pool heater, run uh, the pool pump as well, as much as 2,800 RPMs or 3,200 RPMs, and then run all my freezers and fridges all at the same time and still have plenty to spare. So if you were going to be doing something off grid in a cabin, um, these would be excellent. Like I said, I have um, 10 of those bifacials on here. And if I were to go off grid, I would probably put 10 on each one of these. I might be able to go down to like seven or eight and still get my 3000 watt output. I've got to play with the panels, but I could maybe go from 10 down to like seven or eight panels and still get that 3000 watt output. We'll see. Um, but I would actually get 40 of those panels, 10 on each, or if I could go down to seven or eight, I'd get eight for each, you know, to be able to get my 12,000 watt output out of all four. Um, and that would not be bad at all. Right now I got a 6,000 watt array out there. That's 24, 250 watt panels. I could almost get away with that. <laughs> um, with, um, just if I had... 24 of those um, 400 watt bifacials, I could put six on each one of these inverters and probably run my loads that I need. So you gotta figure out what you are gonna run in that. But 
These are extremely quiet, especially overnight. They hardly make any noise. When this would run my air conditioner last year overnight, it was really loud. Um, and it uses 150 or more watts at idle standby versus 50 watts idle standby on two of these running. So it's going to be 100 amps. I mean 100 amps. 100 watts on idle standby. Um, but I've had no problem. It is the June 11th. And I've been running in 2024, and I've been running my upstairs air conditioner every night um, for the last couple of weeks on these um, EG4 3000 watt off grid inverters and the battery bank, and not having any problems at all. Um, I don't have to do anything, it just runs all day long, runs my solar, my solar runs all my loads. Now I'm to the point when I connect these two, I'm going to be able to run all my loads, but it, um, I don't have to do anything. Just let it run and set my thermostat what I want, set my pool pump um, to what RPMs I want, and the freezers all stay on. It's a very, very reliable system, and these are the biggest powerhouse for the punch for like 674 bucks. It's insane. I'll leave links in the description in the video for this product that I use for most of it. Um, if you have a question on something that I don't include in there, just ask me a question on the uh, comment section and I'll let you know where I got it from. Anyways, anyways, that's pretty much it. I really love these inverters. Um, and actually, to be honest with you, this and this one is brand new. These two I just got are refurbished. These two batteries are brand new. And those three batteries down there are refurbished. And I've had no problems with them. They are working like as if they're brand new. I've had no problems. In fact, I was really surprised when I got my refurbished units that um, pretty much everything was in there. They gave me the breaker they had to throw in a when you get the brand new ones they give you a nader 125 amp but on the refurbished ones they had some off-brand ones on here that they normally don't carry but they gave me a breaker and they gave me the six foot of red uh, battery cable and six foot of black battery cable um and they gave me the wi-fi dongle which i haven't used and they gave me uh, it's like three or four communication cables. This is the only one that I'm really using now. But they gave me the, uh, oh, I'm using the, I'm sorry. They give you these yellow communication cables for parallel. So when you buy one of these, they already have everything in there that you're going to really need to parallel it to another one. So there, you need two of these yellow wires to parallel two inverters together and you get one yellow wire in each one so the only thing i bought was i bought these 20 amp dc um circuit breakers for my solar so they would trip when they get over around 20 21 amps um because you really need to watch the amps coming in this can have a high amount of amps coming in on these um grow watts but these are supposed to be like 18, maybe 20 amps coming in. You don't want more than that. You'll burn it up. But it throttles it down. Um, but yeah, you got to really keep an eye on when you're wiring your solar array to keep those amps way down there. And when you're uh, using like, I have those 10 by facial 400 watt up to 500 watt gain um, by facials and those are 37.17 DC uh, PV volts on that um, I have to run all 10 of those in series to be able to do it on this as where uh, this one has six of those uh, 330 watt panels in series and then six in series and then I parallel those together I could do more, but all I have is 12 of those. On this one, 
What do I have? Oh, this one's just eight solar panels in series, 250 watt polys. And like I said, this one has eight 250 watt used polys in series, another eight 250 watt polys in series, and then I parallel those together. So you have to have separate um, solar input into each four of these that I have. You cannot share solar input. You have to have separate solar input. But what you do share is your battery bank on all four. Like I said, you can see all four of my positive cables come in from my inverters. And then all four of my negative come in from my inverters for the battery. So just keep that in mind. You're going to need separate solar for this one, separate solar for this one, separate solar for that one, separate solar for that one. If you only have two, then you just need, um, you can get away with like those bifacial, 10 of those bifacials on each one of those. Um, that's all I could, that's all I got was just one thing of 10. So, you know, at 37.17, that's only 30, 372 volts. I could probably add like another two onto that, two or three, I have to do the math. But I could probably, I think, go up to 12 or 13 solar panels. But at that point, I could either try to run it. i got to keep below 500 volts DC uh, PV input. But I'd have to decide, do I want to run 12 or 13 in a string? Or do I want to run 6 in a string, a series, 6 in a series, and then parallel them together? That's something you have to figure out. Um but like I said over here, um, I told you what I have going on in those. I really, really like the fact that these can actually start my three and a half ton air conditioner and I can run a ton of mini splits. Um, like I said, I'll run my three and a half ton air conditioner, just those two. In a little bit, I'm gonna kick on this 18,000 BTU uh, mini split out in the garage and that's going to be running on those two as well. So, hope that helps. Um, tried to make it as simple as possible. The only other thing I did not cover on here is, you can see I have my solar input. I have this separate one coming into this one. This one right here. I used a white wire for the negative on purpose because I have a black wire over here. So, I want to be able to keep those separate on there. I did the same thing coming in here got the wires coming in here I got the red and the black coming in from that array and I also used a white negative wire and the red positive for another array so I could keep those kind of separate so but uh, very easy to do um, and it's extremely easy especially if you're watching a video <laughs> you don't know much uh, you just got to make sure you double check and make sure you're connecting everything. But as you can see in here, you got your output wires, which is a black and a white. Your solar, which is a red and a black. Sometimes they'll have a white wire. Um, it might be white and red, but it's usually always red and either black or white for the negative. And then you have your positive and your negative cable coming in. And you only need one communication cable for your battery to communicate with your inverter and once I have this all set up all of these should be able to show my amp hours but I really only need one of them to show my amp hours and state of charge on these but I can always look on my screens down here too these come in really handy with these life power 4 batteries um, or this EG4 LL uh, series that doesn't have a display that comes in handy being able to see your state of charge and your percent um, of battery charge. So um, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. See you in the next video. I'll leave links in the description. And I hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed day.